How do you become a professional full-time paid public speaker? That's a huge question. And for a lot of aspiring public speakers, I want to know where do I even start? What do I do first? What do I do next? How do I actually get a speaking fee, grow my business? Ah, I feel like I'm in overwhelm. The good news is that I have a plan for you. I call it the new public speaker business plan. I'm going to walk you through that with the four things you need today, plus a bonus. Let's get started. Hi, I'm John Cook. I'm the founder of Keynote Content. And over the last five years, I've worked with close to 900 speakers one-on-one, -on -one, helping craft their message and grow their impact from stage. I found that many, many, many aspiring speakers, whether you want to go full-time as a speaker or whether you're a coach or consultant or some other type of industry expert, you want to add in speaking as a way to market your business, there can be a lot of overwhelm. Where do I get started? Do I focus on booking speaking events or do I work on, on crafting my talk or do I put together a talk and I deliver a talk in a smaller crowd and then I get a highlight reel and then I write a sizzle reel or do I put together this promo or a speaker kit or uh, it can be so overwhelming. Where do you get started? Because that was the experience that Katie had when she connected with our team at Keynote Content. Katie is an amazing designer and she's been using this design to really change how people think about educational opportunities. She says, I know I can grow my, my impact. John, I know I want to get in front of a larger audience through speaking, but I don't know where to get started. I went through Google and just this overwhelm and I came to your website, John, because of the fact that it seemed so overwhelming until I got to your site. Where do I get started? So I'm going to walk you through what I told Katie and what I walked through with so many different clients. The first thing you need to do is you need to focus on building your manifesto talk because this will help you clarify exactly why you do what you do, why you want to share what you do and why the people, the exact crowd that you want to connect with, why it matters to them most importantly. When you have that manifesto talk, this is like your line in the sand. This is your, this is what I'm willing to live and die for because it matters that much to me. Start with that talk. Don't try to create these three, four, five other talks. Focus on your why talk first and really, really hone that in. Understand the purpose behind why you want to get in front of a crowd, in front of a larger audience. Now, one of the traps a lot of speakers get into is like, okay, I want to create that talk and I create this other talk and I create this other talk. And pretty, pretty soon you have 19 talks that you've given one time each and it's overwhelming. So I also created another video saying at most you will ever have to create three different talks as a speaker. You can actually watch that video. The link is in the comments. But for now, as you're just starting out, focus on your manifesto talk, the why you do what you do talk. That's the first place to start. The second thing that you want to do is create a simple offer. Don't try to solve all the problems that your audience is facing with a big blanket offer. Make it a specific, simple offer for a specific question or challenge or problem that they're facing. And when you create that offer, especially for a lot of speakers, coaching is often the easiest offer you can make because it makes the most sense for you to deliver on that between speaking engagements. So you make that offer and you make it time specific. I like saying 90 days or less for your simple offer, 90 days or less and an outcome specific tied to a specific question or problem or challenge. What's the key problem? Like if I can just solve that for my audience, I know that's, that would be an amazing home run and focus on just that outcome with your specific simple offer and then make it measurable over these next 30, 60, 90 days, we're going to have this type of outcome. And the way we're going to measure that is saying we're going to create X number of leads or conversations or changes or growth or percentage loss or percentage gain, whatever it might be specifically like that. So you can say, here's how I know we're on track over the next 90 days. I'm going to help you grow your business by 30% by generating 30 or more leads through LinkedIn of people who actually want to talk with you and can't wait to work with you. That's an incredible offer. It's simple, it's measurable, it's outcome specific, and it's also time restricted. That's a great offer. Making that simple offer is a key part. Where a lot of new speakers get hung up is in the marketing side of things. I feel like I have to create a sizzle reel, which is a terrible name for it, but like a highlight rule, a, a pro promo video. I need to create a seven, eight pages of testimonials. I need to get all these podcasts that I've shared on. I need to get all their logos and linked and all these other different things and, and have like four or five different talks with the takeaways. And it's just overwhelming at that point. I'm saying focus on what I call your promo 1.0. What is your minimum viable promo pack that you need to connect with event planners or podcast hosts so that you can get in conversation with them? There are three things you need. I call this just your promo video. Some people call this a why video or a book me video, whatever you call it, 90 seconds or less. Talk about who you are, what you focus on, why you do what you do and why it matters and how you can help their audience have that transformation. 
because they booked you. Promo video is the first part. And then essentially, it's kind of like a speaker promo pack. So it's a speaker PDF. It has your headshot, it has your speaker bio, not your feature bio, your speaker specific bio. It has your one talk, your manifesto talk with three or four bullet points of takeaways. And then it also has two or three testimonials of people who have heard you speak or clients that you've worked with giving a testimony to the value that you bring and your perspective. That's all you need in that speaker PDF. It gives you, you know, four or five different pieces. It's a one to two page front and back PDF, super simple. It lets them know, hey, you have something that they can hold on to, read through and figure out, is this the right fit? And then for the people who are looking at this saying, I love having a scheduler. I use Calendly for all my scheduling, but that just works for me. You might use Simply Book or Bookify or Acuity or Appointment Core, or you might use Calendly, whatever it is, give the, uh, whether it's a podcast host or an event planner, give them something simple to click on to book a time with you to start a conversation. Don't make them go through a bunch of different hoops. Don't make them answer this or click this, or do this. Like, click this, get on my schedule. We'll talk about your event and go from there. The fourth thing that I think is super overlooked because of the fact that we take it to the next degree is not just gratitude, but what I call remarkable gratitude. Remarkable gratitude is not just saying, hey, thank you so much for allowing me to be on your podcast. But let's say that you were uh, during the podcast as you were recording, you noticed that they had a water bottle next to them. I know what type of water bottle that it is. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy a specific, that specific same type of water bottle, but I'm going to get their logo etched on the side in a beautiful silver glaze or whatever it might be, so that, and then send it with a nice note. So it's not just, hey, thanks so much for having your podcast, but here is a water bottle because it seems like you are enjoying uh, staying hydrated like I do. And so hopefully you can get outside, enjoy some sunshine. Here's a water bottle to carry along with you to help you stay hydrated through the day. And also that logo gives them a remarkable experience because it's not just, hey, you got me a water bottle. You got me a water bottle with my logo on it. You took the time to make it personalized for me. That's remarkable. The more you can send remarkable gifts, the more you can have an amazing experience because gratitude grows stages. Without those people saying yes to you, whether it's a podcast host, an event planner, some type of summit organizer, unless they say yes to you, you're never gonna get that opportunity. That was a risk that they took and you can show that gratitude back to them because without you, without your trust, this wouldn't have happened. So thank you so much. If you follow this plan, you will build a strong business as a brand new speaker that you can continue to scale into the future. And if you love what I shared so far, go ahead and subscribe. You can catch more of my videos about how to grow your impact as a speaker. And I did mention that there was a bonus. I found that there are five mistakes that absolutely will destroy your momentum as a brand new speaker. But the good news is that I put together a video walking through each of those mistakes and how to avoid them so that you can keep your momentum going into the future. So hit play on this next video. We'll see you there.